Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and a game in the Fenyang. Yeah, hands up if you forgot that that was a ship that existed. It's not really one that you see played very often, at least certainly I don't. And I think that's largely because it's not a particularly exciting ship. It is, in some ways, a worse Akizuki. In some ways, however, it's also a better Akizuki, and I might have to explain that slightly. Where it's worse is basically in terms of both the firepower and arguably the torpedoes as well. It has a lower rate of fire than the Akizuki, which was really the only main strength of that ship. I personally am not a fan of the Akizuki, I ended up selling it after I had ground through it, mainly because it's a fairly sluggish destroyer and its AA just wasn't quite as effective post CV rework. This however has largely the same AA with the addition of a defensive which is probably more useful on a destroyer than most other classes. The torpedoes are, of course, deep water, but these are the same sort of deep water torps you find on the Asashio in that they can only hit battleships and carriers, so that's another place where it is worse. It's also got a worse reload on those torpedoes, but it does have a better range, at least. And they are the same just under 21k damage uh, torps, so... Yeah, they do pack a punch if they actually hit, but it takes a fair while for them to reload. But you do still have also the reload booster as well, so it's not completely terrible, but it does just lack that utility in that regard that the uh, the Akizuki has, that, that it can combat other destroyers better, both in terms of using its guns and in actually being able to torpedo them. Set. Now where it's better is basically in the consumables. I've already mentioned that it has that reload booster and the AA. It's also got Pan-Asian smokes, so you've got more of them. You have quite a long laying time, although they don't last for that long, but just because there's also a quite a short cooldown on them, they are very, very nice. They are one of the big strengths of the Pan-Asian destroyer line. In fact, they're one of my favourite features of the Pan-Asian destroyer line. So, although this is pretty arguably an inferior gunboat destroyer, I think I overall do prefer it to the ship that it's based on. Not so much the torpedoes. The torpedoes are a bit niche, and I will get to get some good use out of them in this particular match. They do, of course, have the advantage of being very low detection uh, compared to regular torpedoes. But just with the length of time it takes to reload those torps, getting to use them on a regular basis is tricky. <laughs> it's very, very tricky. So these planes keep buzzing nearby and picking me up, and I am going to pick up some plane kills in this one, so... I'm doing the risky thing, just opening fire, which I probably didn't need to do because, of course, the planes are gone now and I'm stuck with that cooldown. And I didn't even quite have smoke available, but I do now, although I decided that I was just going to try and wriggle my way out of this one. You can see I don't have... Uh, is this an expert marksman? I can't even remember the um, the one that lets you know how many people are aiming at you, but I do have the incoming fire alert skill, so uh, which is only one point, so I do have some warning of uh, stuff that's coming in my direction. I wasn't too heavily targeted though. That hipper that was chilling next to that island next to me and had utterly failed to read the minimap and appropriately make a getaway. Uh, has, you know, <laughs> brought the brunt of their, their attention, so uh, yeah, that's kind of worked out for me a bit at least. Although, there's a bit of blind damage from that Tirpitz there, which was unpleasant. And here come more planes, so I might actually pop some smoke now, because those implacable rocket planes are definitely coming back for me. I had initially thought we had a good chance of taking this cap here, but when I turned around and realised that the Kagero was not coming in the cap with me, and instead 
has put himself on the A-line, is now tangling with enemy Akizuki and has actually just died to the Roma. Uh, it was basically just me, the Izumo and the Hippa, and the Izumo is actually going to be able to get away from this. So, uh, of the ships that looked like they were coming here initially, uh, the Hippa and the Kagero weren't particularly in useful positions, and so... Yeah, given the extent of the enemy's uh, ships up here, it, it seemed prudent to fall back rather than try and uh, actively stick around and contest the cap any longer. So that's going to be some more top hits, it looks like. The 12 kilometer range is actually quite handy, especially in tier 10 games, although this isn't too bad matchmaking wise. If the carrier was a tier 10, I'd probably be a lot more worried about it. Uh, and although there are some uh, uh, tier 10 destroyers that are there I definitely don't want to tangle with, uh, overall this isn't too bad, it could definitely be a lot worse, but uh, in terms of the teams it's not looking especially great right now, so uh, you know if I can land more torp hits that will be good, and in some ways this is actually quite a decent position to be in in a torpedo dropping destroyer head of an advancing enemy but of course here's where that long reload comes in and of course there's also the cooldown on the torp reload booster so it's not like I can just spam that out in rapid rapid succession so altogether this is a bit awkward I also know of course that I can't drop on the cruisers that might be coming this way although there's only two cruisers on the enemy team and only the enemy is it Megami I think is uh, roughly on this side. These two battleships, of course, are very tempting, but I just have to wait for my smoke to cool down. On, on, although, of course, with this, you can just smoke up and pew pew away at people. If I do that, no one's going to be spotting for me. It's, it's one of those situations where I, I can't really do much but just fall back and wait for my torpedoes to reload. I did have half a notion I was going to be able to cap B, but... Again, I don't really have the support. It's the problem I had at the C cap. The team that uh, went down to A, which is probably more than half my teammates, they're now pushing round out of A, but they've failed to kill that Friesland that was buzzing around on their flank, and they've now got an Asashio that's ahead of them. And they're now also meeting the ships that are pushing down from that northeast corner. So I don't have the utmost faith that they're going to be able to take the middle, especially with that Asashio buzzing around in front of them, because uh, our battleships can do a relatively limited amount against it, and uh, it, it's really up to our CV to be able to do some spotting. So more torps out, and actually splitting my targets here a bit. The spread on these torps is not great. That's only at eight kilometers away. Uh, even with um, being a lot closer, I, I think it's going to be comparatively unlikely that you'll ever fit, hit all four torpedoes unless uh, you are super, super close, like within spotting distance close. I didn't uh, quite judge that Roma drop right, but I still got one hit there, so I'm up to nearly 100k damage, and I think both those battleships flooded, so if I were to pop a smoke now and try and set a fire, well, that actually might be quite a handy thing to do. And really, I should have gone for the turbits here, just because they are lower health, but they're more focused, it looks like, on our team. Mind you, the Roma's firing that way now as well, but they were charging after our Izumo, so I don't know. For some reason, as I was playing this, the Roma seemed like the more attractive target. Now, do you remember the enemy Akizuki? Because at this point, I think I'd semi-forgotten about them. The Up until that point, the when they opened fire, for some reason on the Izumo at about five kilometers away from my smoke screen. Now I have no explanation for this whatsoever but it was jolly lucky for me that they did because I really hadn't been paying attention to the possibility that they might be that close and they could have just torpedoed my smoke. But somehow they missed the fact that there was a smoke screen five kilometers from them that was firing at their allied Roma. I have absolutely no comprehensive, comprehensible 
whatever i just i don't i don't i don't know i don't know what they were thinking but it's a good thing for me that they were thinking that particular thing instead of a sensible thing because it means i'm alive and they're dead i think i did briefly pin a fire on that rover by the way but yeah not had any success trying to get it to stick now it would be nice if we could kill them off because then i could move back to the middle but the Friesland that was on the J-Line that they totally fa failed to kill is now in a position to either go for A or indeed go for our CV. And the Friesland, of course, has actually itself got very good AA for a destroyer. So I can either try and contest the middle here and go back and uh, help my allies, and in particular help the, the Mogador, who of course doesn't have any smoke to shield them from Engine being uh, picked on by the enemy carrier, or I can try and intercept this Friesland, and well, considering what's going to happen next, I might as well have just gone to the middle, but I didn't know that at the time. So, for now, I'm going to try and intercept this Friesland, and it kind of looks like the Izumo is having the same thought. They surely must be unspotted uh, by... Well, they must have been unspotted for a bit. They will now be spotted by that Friesland. But they, they would potentially have had a bit of space and time to reposition themselves to angle more towards the middle. But they've come steaming along in this direction still. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what their plan was. But uh, as it's going to turn out, <laughs> they will be the one that gets the killing blow. So the Friesland disappears behind the island and smokes up, starts pew-pewing at the Ismo. Of course, nobody was spotting the Enterprise for them then, so they uh, couldn't see that to shoot at. But because they were pew-pewing in the smoke, the Ismo was able to take a blind fire guess shot and actually got the kill. So I really didn't need to come here to begin with. But of course, hindsight's 2020. I did not know that at the time. Unfortunately, this is just as my speed boost has run out. And also for some very odd reason, and this is your Jedi moment for the game, I suppose, in that it is just a bit of unexplainable derp on my part. I did not notice for about a minute, or maybe even a little bit more, that for some reason I was sat on three quarters speed. And I was actively wondering why my ship felt so sluggish. <laughs> and then at some point, I happened to glance down at the bottom left hand corner and realised I was only going at 26 <laughs> knots. So, yeah. So I was left of the two teams smashed into each other in the middle, including quite literally when the Lenin rammed the Sovetsky Soyuz. I didn't get a good glimpse to see if that was good trade or not, but anyway, we are down to now the rather damaged Izumo, uh, the carrier, and myself and the Mogador, and the enemy team is down to this very low health uh, Megami, their Sashio, who hasn't been seen in a little while, and their own CV. And as he is being harassed by both the uh, the CV and this uh, Megami, actually opened fire here. But here's where that 100mm calibre is uh, not so great when dealing with things with smaller amounts of superstructure, because I'm just getting shatter after shatter. I might have been better off with AP here. Probably still would have gotten some shatters, but I, I might have had slightly better luck than just hoping to hit the comparatively small amount of superstructure. Now, this distraction or whatever is uh, not enough to uh, save the Mogador. It's only once the Mogador dies that the Megami turns their attention to me. And it's a 155 Megami, so they've got quite a fast rate of fire as well. And I could have smoked here, but decided I was going to hold on to those last two smokes just for now and I do take a little bit of damage but as it is the Enterprise is able to get uh, a hit and it's actually the Ismo that gets the killing blow and at the moment my main worry is not actually the carrier I still have three of my defensives left my main worry is running into the Asashio because those 127 mil Japanese guns can hurt and I would be less worried if I was in the Akazuki, because the Akazuki can fire that much faster, but with the, what is it, 4 point something second reload? 
Or is it even a little worse than that? I can't remember. That Akizuki, not Akizuki, the um, Asashio could potentially really hurt me. Maybe not kill me, but hurt me enough for the CV to then be able to finish me off. I also have worries that the CV might, if they focus the Izumo hard enough, be able to finish them off. So I'm not too concerned about staying stealthy right now. And then we get another stroke of luck. So before, obviously, with the Akizuki, they had their own derp, which resulted in them losing their ship. Now we find out the Asashio has retreated all the way up there. I don't know if they'd run out of smokes, perhaps? Although I, I think they have just smoked up, maybe to avoid that, uh, that uh, flight of rocket planes that's going overhead. It's not entirely clear. But uh, essentially, yeah, they aren't in the picture anymore. And we are really close on points. For a while, this looked like it was fairly dicey. Especially when we only had the two caps. But with being able to regain that middle cap and actually knocking out as many ships and actually coming back from a deficit of ships, uh, we've come down to now being in a, a situation where we are just overtaking them on points, but there's only a minute left. So if anybody dies, that could be game. And this is where that Asashio running away has kind of screwed the enemy team. So I completely eliminated that flight of rocket planes with my defensive, and I'm now just keep queuing and farming some damage off the implacable. I'm not hugely worried about the carpet bombs. The British carpet bombs are not an effective tool against destroyers especially. I took a little bit of damage and they set a fire but uh, yeah between my AA and actually there's now some fighters around as well and my maneuvering the risk here is fairly minimal. In fact that, that was uh, well, that first pass was the only hit they got off on me so it now just remains to be seen if I can finish off this implacable. And if I had the Akizuki's rate of fire, maybe I might have done it. But if I was in an Akizuki, I wouldn't have been able to make the torpedo hits that I made in this game. And I would have had to wait longer between smoke cooldowns. And I would have had fewer smokes. So, yeah, overall, I think this is a result I would have had to work harder at to produce in the Akizuki, and I certainly would have had to be more cautious about the carrier considering it doesn't have a defensive AA. So maybe if you semi-like the idea of the Akizuki and it's supposing, uh, supposedly having decent AA at uh, tier 8, well if you slap a uh, defensive on it, it actually does become something somewhat decent. Although, having said that, if it was a tier 10 CV in this game, this might have been a very different outcome. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this replay. It was quite a close game, and I was quite pleased to come through with a win in that one, especially in a ship that I am not the most comfortable with. And if you did enjoy this replay, you can do all these usual things down underneath the video, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.